Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. Today I have another 5 mid tier money making methods for you guys. I find once you get to a mid level account the amount of methods you have for making money and getting experience really starts to grow. This one I personally had a lot more fun uh, trying out different methods. So all of these methods today are going to require between the levels of 50 and 70 for the most part. Some will be a little higher and some will be a little lower but just generally around that tier. Anyway guys hope you enjoy and let's get started. All right, starting off at number five is killing the crazy archaeologist. Uh, for those who don't know, the crazy archaeologist resides in the wilderness around level 20, I believe. He's not a super high tier boss, but he can be killed with um, 50 magic with Ivan's Blast if you want. However, 75 for the Trident would be ideal, but anything in between will work. The estimated profit per hour is only going to be between 300 and 400 K. However, I really find it fun to kill this boss. He has quite a few average drops. However, he does drop the Odium Shard 2, which is worth 770 K and the Malediction Ward, which is worth 230k. So he does have a couple valuable drops, and they are not extremely rare. You have about a 1 in 128 chance of getting a shard, and a 1 in 256 chance of getting a specific one. He also has an uncommon drop of Onyx Bolt Tips, which is worth about 100k. So for gear, you definitely want to bring a Trident, and I'm bringing a Rims and a Rims Bottom for the three items I'm going to keep. I'm also just bringing some other very inexpensive magic gear, like the Saradoman Cape, uh, Blue Wizard hat, Mystic Boots, and some Room Gloves. So my risk right now is uh, under 100k, it's really not too much. For my inventory, I'm just bringing Prayer Potions because you need to pray range, and some food. So the easiest way to get here by far is using the Burning Amulet. You want to go to the uh, Bandit Camp Teleport, which is in level 17 Wilderness, so it's actually relatively close. From here, you're just going to run a little bit north uh, west until you get to the Runes. So as soon as you get there, you're going to want to pray range and start just attacking him with the uh, trident. Now you protect from all his range damage and as long as you don't get in melee range he can't actually damage you except for these books which he can chuck at you but they're very easy to dodge so it's not that big an issue. So he's right in the middle here and you kind of want to get to a more open area because if you get kind of stuck in between stuff it's a lot harder to dodge his books which I'll show you in a second and you don't want to get within melee range either. So he only has 225 HP which is not a whole lot and the trident really rips through him quickly. So the random knowledge is what you have to dodge at kind of like there, but it has a one volley of three books and then the following volley of two. So you have to be aware of that, but really you shouldn't be taking that much damage. Uh, this is probably a little excessive for Monkfish. However, there's a minor chance that a PKer may come and try to kill you. Now if you're playing at off-peak hours, or if you want to be a little more risky, you can go into World 18, the Bounty Hunter World, and um, there's actually one in five chance of it dropping a mysterious emblem, which is actually worth 100k, which then makes this actually very profitable. However, you do have to compete with other PKers and other people there trying to mess you up. So the first drop is 25k of cannonballs. That's pretty nice. It's not the best money in the game by any means, but it's fun. There are some items that you can get fairly commonly because you can get probably 30 kills an hour here. And uh, the drop is only 1 out of 128, so it's relatively quick. Coming in at number 4 is uh, killing Kurasks. Whether on task or off task, they're both relatively good. Now this does come with a fairly hefty requirement of 70 Slayer. So it's one of the higher requirements of this video, however it is a nice AFK method to get between 400 and 600k an hour depending on your luck, your gear, and the current prices of the items. To get here it is in the Relica Slayer dungeon so you really do have to do quite a bit of running. Now the quickest teleport is a Slayer ring to the entrance and then you can either go through the agility shortcuts or run through the whole thing. As far as gear, really all you need is a rune crossbow with broad bolts. Broad bolts are very important if you're going to be ranging them. Now you can melee them and you will get a bit quicker kills I believe, however I really like how AFK the range setup is and you don't have to bring any food. Now this is one of the few monsters where a Ring of Wealth is actually viable because they do have coin drops fairly frequently and if you're really lazy and you don't want to pick them up, it can be worth it for you just to have the Ring of Wealth. Now the Kurask has a bunch of things on the drop table, nothing too valuable however it has 10k coin drops, limper roots, this white berry drop it just got is worth 10k, tons of herbs, seeds, and a very rare chance of getting a leaf bladed battle axe, however that's still not worth that much, only about 100k, but it drops of runes and just a lot of mildly valuable stuff that adds up quite quickly. For an inventory setup you really just want to bring some ranging potions and some alchemy runes because they do drop pretty frequently alchemical stuff and if you plan on staying here a while you're going to want uh, some way of getting rid of it so alk runes are very nice. And the last thing I like about this method is um, the fact that you actually get moderately okay range experience, not a ton. But you can get between 30 and 50k range experience. It really depends on how much you're paying attention, but it's something. And actually quite a bit better than most money making methods. Coming in at number 3 is uh, buying from the food shop in the Warriors Guild. 
Now the only real requirement is to be able to get into the Warriors Guild, so what you will need to get in here is a combination of 130 between attack and strength, or alternatively you can have 99 and 1. The most effective way to get this is just to have 65 attack and 65 strength, or something around that. You also need uh, between 50 and 100k, not a lot of cash, but what you're going to be buying is items from Lydio. Now he actually sells uh, potato with cheeses and plain pizzas at a very discounted price compared to the Grand Exchange. The plain pizzas sell for 382 and the uh, potato with cheeses sell for 354 Now the profit per hour varies a lot here depending on the prices. Right now you're probably going to be getting between 400 and 500 k an hour. I've gotten up to 700 k before and as low as 300 k So it's kind of a range of profits per hour, but this is a really good method for if you get wiped cleaned or you just totally out of money for some reason. To do this for an hour you really don't need much more than a couple hundred k and it's a really nice method to get your bankroll starting. So basically you just have to hop worlds, look and see if someone's in stock and now you're going to be fighting with Iron Man quite a bit as well as bots so you don't want to do this all the time. Doing it during off peak hours is very beneficial because there will be less people doing this. Alright we found a couple plain pieces and potato with cheeses in this world. It adds up really quickly if the worlds are relatively empty and not a lot of people doing it. Um, if it's busy, I might consider just coming back later. Now coming in at number 2 is Killing Revenants. Now this has been one of my favorite methods to make money for the last well, 2 months, pretty much since it's come out. Now obviously this is a pretty high risk method because it's in the wilderness and it's a PvP hotspot. However, the profit per hour can be extremely good, but it varies quite a bit. I would say you're guaranteed at least 400 to 500k an hour if you don't die. And you get upwards of a mil an hour or two mil an hour if you get lucky. However, on the flip side, if you die, you could go negative or just break even. Another thing I like about these guys is that you can kill them with a lot of different gear. Uh, the most ideal is a blowpipe and just some basic range gear. You can be a level 50 and just kill the Revenant Imp and the Revenant Pyre Fiend, or you can be a level 100 or 126 and just kill the Revenant Dragon. You have a lot of freedom in what you can do there. The one item you will need is the Bracelet of Ethereum, otherwise you're going to take a ton of damage from the Revenant. So what I bring is a Blowpipe, Black Dehyde Body, Black Dehyde Chaps, Snakeskin Boots, Archer Helm or a Dehyde Coif if you wanted, Ava's Accumulator, and the Amulet of Glory. So I'm currently risking just over 100k. Now for my inventory, I bring a Prayer Potion or a Super Restore, a Ranging Potion, and a Stamina Potion. Now to get here, I use a Burning Amulet to the Lava Maze. It's the most direct and uh, low requirement method to teleport. From here, you're going to run a little bit to the east and go down into the Revenant Hole. Now most of the Revenant Cave is above level 30 Wilderness, so to get away from a PK, you're really just going to have to run them. However, there is a small section at the bottom that is actually below level 30 Wilderness, so if you react quickly enough, you can teleport out before you get teleblocked. Now I find for my level, the best monsters to kill are the Revenant Imp, uh, the Revenant Pyre Fiend, let's see here, Revenant Demon's nice, uh, the Revenant Hellhound's a nice easy one, and they usually will prey Eagle Eye because the Revenants heal a lot, which is quite annoying. You really need the raw DPS to get them down before they start spamming their heal over and over and over again. So you can see right now I'm actually in level 30 Wilderness, so I could teleport away if uh, I notice the care quickly enough. And really, if you're paying uh, close attention, you really should not die that frequently. So you can see I just got five Battle Stab, just a nice uh, common drop worth about 43k. So I personally like being in worlds with uh, not a ton of people, but some people. You don't want to be alone because then if a PK or hops onto that world, um, you are going to be the first one to get attacked. However, you don't want to be too crowded or else you're not going to be able to kill Revenants. Coming in at number one is smithing steel bars in the blast furnace. Now you can do this at a very low level. All you need is level 30 smithing. However, I would recommend at least 60. The reason for that is you don't have to pay these uh, little chumps over here to operate the blast furnace for you now. So it saves you a little bit of money. Now stuff you will need for smithing steel bars is a coal bag, absolutely you need this 100%. You'll want weight reducing equipment, although that's not required, and ice gloves if you have them because they're very handy and it saves you an inventory spot. So to start off here, you're going to want to put some money in the coffer because these guys need some money just like the rest of us. Uh, if you just put in 100k, that should be good for about an hour. Now I've already done this, but what you need to start by doing is put an inventory of coal into the furnace before you begin the rest of the process. If you put your iron in first, it's going to make iron bars and then it's just going to keep messing up. So what we're going to want to do is come over here with 27 coal, chuck them on the conveyor belt, and then run back and grab uh, both iron and coal. So now we put the inventory in, imagine, and now we're going to run back here. So you want to uh, fill your coal bag with coal and then withdraw a full inventory of iron. So now all you have to do is just run over here to the conveyor belt, click on it once, it'll empty the entire thing of iron for you. You're going to want to hit one on your keyboard to make it quicker. 
right click empty your coal bag and then click on the conveyor belt again and hit yes. Now you can run down here and the ice gloves will automatically cool the bars for you. You'll hit on the all button just below the steel bar section, run back to the bank and repeat the process. We'll do it one more time. So deposit the steel bars, withdraw the coal, use your coal bag on steel bars, withdraw more iron, run back to the conveyor belt, click on put ore on the conveyor belt, hit the one button, empty your coal bag, click on it again, hit the one button, run down here, cool down the bars, pick up your bars, run back and bank them. It's a really easy process, you'll get the hang of it quickly, and on top of that you'll also get 60 to 70k smithing experience an hour, which is actually a very nice way to level up your smithing. And at the current prices you can expect to get between 600k and 800k an hour, although that can go up and down quite frequently. Anyway guys, that is about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, and I will see you in the next one.